British motorcycles were at the vanguard of the early days of motorcycle racing, and I don't think there's any more iconic British race bike than the Manx Norton of the 1950s. In this episode, we again speak with Dave about his Manx Norton that has a unique place in Australian motorcycle history. Two of the motorcycles in my collection are Manx Nortons. The 59 model, which is Tommy Phillips' bike. He did really well on the bike in the 59 season, 22 starts, eight wins. That was in Europe, the Isle of Man, England and Australia. The second bike that I've got is a 54 Manx Norton that was originally ridden by Richie Thompson. A Manx Norton is a um, legendary motorcycle that um, was specifically developed to um, as a production racing motorcycle and um, they knew they had a good engine but they uh, the handling let them down so they developed the featherbed frame that gave the Manx Norton another 10 or 15 years of competitiveness. In the hands of a privateer with the one of the few motorcycles that actually could put it up against the, um, the best in the world on factory bikes like the Inver Augusta and the um, Gileras at the time. Uh, to, to explain the featherbed frame isn't about the design. I mean, I'm, I'm not educated enough to explain the advantages of a featherbed frame. But a gentleman named McCandles designed it and it just added so much rigidity to the motorcycle that the motorcycle handled even though the, the Manx Norton engine really didn't develop the power of some of the other motorcycles that were running at the time. It just became this fantastic motorcycle that was competitive and a lot of the test riders that rode it at the time said it rides like a feather bed. Usually a Manx Norton was always in the top, top three or four bikes at any event back in the 50s and early 60s. So basically if you wanted to win races you bought a Manx Norton. And Norton would only sell your motorcycle if you were a known rider. You couldn't just walk up and buy a Manx Norton. Uh, there was about a thousand bikes built over the 10 year production. So they're pretty hard to get now, an original bike with a history. This bike had three really, really well-known riders hanging their balls between those chassis rails. And um, as far as I'm concerned, this bike's priceless because of the story that goes with it was purchased new by an Australian rider named Tommy Phyllis. Several people all over the world decided to take on the world stage in Europe and England. Uh, at the time it was called the Circus and um, the reason it was called the Continental Circus was because riders used to go from one city to the next and they'd live out of vans and camp basically all around these different circuits to um, go racing. It's not like today where you had big sponsors um, so they called it the Continental Circus. Anyway, Tommy Phillips bought this bike in 1959. He bought two Manx Nortons, a 350 and a 500, which is generally the kit that you went to race with. So Tommy Phillips proved his mettle here in Australia and um, he established himself as a pretty gun rider. So he bought that bike in 59. He had 22 starts that season, had eight wins. In 1960, he approached Honda, who um, were just starting to get involved in Grand Prix racing and convinced them that he was just somebody that should ride their bikes. So he teamed up with Mike Harwood. In the 61 season, he um, became the first world champion on a Honda, on a Japanese motorcycle. Uh, Mike Harwood came second in the 125 class to him, and then Mike Harwood came first in the 250 class, and Tommy Phyllis came second in the 250 class. So realistically, Tommy Phyllis was one of the best riders in the world at the time. In 61, Tommy Phyllis also was the first person to average 100 miles an hour on a push rod motorcycle at the Isle of Man. This bike came 17th at the Isle of Man with Tommy on it in 59. And in 62, Tommy got killed at the Isle of Man on a Honda. It's an absolute tragedy because I believe he would have been right up there as the best rider in the world. So after that, Jack Ahern, who's another really, really famous Australian rider, somehow got hold of the bike. He sold the bike in 1962 to Len Attlee. Len Attlee prepared the bike and then went back to the Isle of Man in 66 and 67 and did a few events in Europe. He got clocked at 135 miles an hour on this bike, going down the straights at the Isle of Man. Um, he didn't win, but by then the bike really wasn't that competitive anymore against the more modern stuff. He sold the bike to Jack Rasmussen and um, Jack, put the bike back to a Manx Norton as it is now. And then he campaigned it in the 80s. And, um, and then the bike was retired and a friend of mine bought the bike off Jack 
and it sat in his shed wrapped in cotton wool for um, almost 20 years. Anyway, he told me he was selling the motorcycle, so I bought it off him. And then the first thing he said, what are you going to do with it? I said, I'm going to get it registered and ride it. So the day I bought it off him, I took it out on the road and went roaring up and down the street and he just shook his head. And I've probably done a thousand miles on that bike now. It's done more miles with me than with anybody else, I reckon. It's a really, really historic piece and I'm honoured to own it. I actually, uh, Len Attlee was reunited with it at the Barry Sheen um, two years ago now. And it was a miracle that I actually um, saw him because I was walking away from the motorcycle and I saw this old guy walking around it. And for some reason I had to ask him the question of, you know, are you interested in the bike? And he said, well, it's my bike. And I said, you're Len Attlee. And he said, yep. So we got some great photos of him sitting on it and he told me all the stories about the, the bike. And then another old guy who was friends with Tommy Phyllis came up and sat on it and um, he started crying his eyes out because he said he was one of his best friends and he misses him. So that's the whole thing, bringing history back to life. Um, I feel like I'm in the Isle of Man. And uh, last year I was supposed to go back and run there but COVID stopped all that. It would have been cool to go around. Anyway, maybe in, um, next year. It's uh, 60 years since Tom got killed, so. As you can tell, Dave is passionate about the history of the motorcycles that he owns, and I really do hope he makes it to the Isle of Man with his Manx, so the story of this British classic can continue to evolve. There are plenty more stories coming up on the channel, but if you have a story about your bike that you'd like to share, get in touch. There's contact details in the description. And remember, you can't buy happiness, but you can ride a motorcycle, and that's kind of the same thing.